Now, but the amazing thing is people don't know. The solar eclipse is happening on the very same day as the original plagues of the three days of darkness began. No! Yes, yes. Okay, it's on okay, the okay. very same day. This one? This 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 one we're going to have? April, April 8th. 8th is the very day of the three days of darkness plagues began in the in original the land of Egypt. Exodus. Yes. Unbelievable. Is this a warning then? Is God, it's going, we got the Nineveh and the Jonah towns going through, but I mean, is it, what kind of warning is this? Great question. Here's the thing. In Genesis 114, God declared yeah. the sun and the moon were for signs. Right. The only signs they can give is eclipses. All right. And the nice thing about eclipses, no false prophet can manipulate it. No. Okay. And they speak to every language, tribe, nation, and tongue. Yep. They don't need to be translated. Nope. Solar eclipse means judgment is coming upon a nation. Lunar eclipse refers to judgment coming upon Israel. Okay. Now, get a load of this. There has only been, since we become a nation in 1776, there has only been eight total solar eclipses that have completely crossed the United States. I'm not talking about one that just clips California or Florida. I'm talking that traverses the whole United States horizontally or vertically. There's only been eight since we became a nation. Wow. And guess when they occurred? Two of them occurred during the Revolutionary War. Three of them occurred during the Civil War. Two of them occurred during the Vietnam War. Are we getting a hint of what this oh, means? Oh, no. And so now in the 2000s, there was 2017, and now this one in 2024, and it's like a bullseye forms an X right over the United States. Now, here's what's amazing. Of those eight, only one, which was the one seven years ago, it only crossed the United States and no other country. The other ones crossed Mexico and Canada and U.S. or something right. like that. But the United States was singled out with Just the one, one seven years ago. Yes. Once. Wow. And now we have April 8th on Nissan 1. That Nissan 1 is the same day the glory of God fell. It's the same day at the inauguration ceremony of Moses' tabernacle. Okay? This is when this eclipse crosses these two places in the United States. And it's definitely... God wants to communicate with us. People have to understand, God wants to communicate. These eclipses are communications directly from God warning us of what's coming. I mean, this is, without a question, a biblical sign. I was telling people yeah. uh, earlier that, you know, you got the solar eclipses. That's God made. You, when you have a moon, a lunar eclipse or a blood moon that you were yeah. so famous in bringing forward, that's a God sign. The... There's two different types of locusts coming, you know, we know that. Yeah. You know, there's all all of these signs that are coming right now are all God signs. They're not man-made, not right. man-manipulated. It right. isn't Y2K. Right. Okay, it's not the mind calendar. Right. It's not Harold <laughs> Camping predicting the rapture, right. all of which exactly. man-made and failed. These yes. are God signs. You can't run from these. These are biblical, right? Ex that's the whole point. See, the problem is the church is on the wrong calendar. Because our regular calendar is based only on the sun. That's the, wrong. And, That's wrong. And Iran uses the same calendar we do. Okay. Then you have the Muslim calendar, which is only based on the moon. Now, they're both scientifically accurate, but they're not the one God uses. Like if I'm meeting with you, we have a two or three hour time difference. Right. If we're going to meet, we got to agree on what time. Right. God is the master of time. And if you're a slave... Who controls your time? The master. The master he tells you does. when to go to bed, when to get up, when to do this. God, the first commandment. Most people don't realize, you know, the very first commandment wasn't given on Mount Sinai. The very first commandment was given in Egypt, and it was get on my calendar. Nisan wow. 1 is the first day. He wants his people on his calendar. Well, in Genesis 1.14, it says, let them determine the times. Not let the sun, not let the moon, but the reason why, you can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon. You can only have a lunar eclipse that's on true. a full moon. That's so true. that's why he says, okay, your months are based on the new moon. 
This is where I can communicate with you. Yep. Okay. Passover and Sukkot are on a full moon, so I can yep. communicate with you. Because it's the appointed times. Appointed time. Exactly. It is. The other cuckoo yep yep. Uh, oh, here's one. Great plan. Texas Red Angus flying them 7,000 miles to Israel. Many evangelicals believe these red heifers will usher Christ's second coming. Ceremony could take place any day. Rapture isn't coming. There haven't been any ominous signs. expression the world has just changed in ways that people are only now beginning to feel uh, the red heifers have just arrived in Israel they're still less than a year old they have to be two years old in one day but when they are two years old in one day we can perform the red heifer uh, ceremony and that will allow us to begin the temple service in completeness we don't need the temple to do that um, we just need a small altar in the proper space on the Temple Mount. And when we begin the temple service, then it can become a house of prayer for all nations. And that's what we're all waiting for. I want to, I want to take your sacrifice up, dude. I want to, you come to me. I want to be the one to take your sacrifice. I'm looking forward to that day. Here are more pictures of the arrival of the red heifers that was in Israel. And you can pause and read this caption. Of course, as you can see right there, they're talking about it. But there they are right there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Because the red heifer is in link with the temple sacrifices. And they are preparing for the third temple. Why is this prophetic? Because there is a temple here during the tribulation. That's the third temple. And some may say that's the human body. No, it isn't. Because the outer court is literally trampled by the Gentiles. We see this temple again mentioned in Daniel 9, 27 with the sacrifices that's in link to the Antichrist and the treaty he gets. We're at the time of the end, my friends. If you don't know Jesus, get to know him. Check the pin video on my page to get saved and follow for more content like this. Also, if end time prophecy interests you, at the end of the month, I'm doing a three-day detailed analysis on the book of Revelation. If you like my teaching style, you'll benefit from it. I'm going to be talking about the different schools of thought, the Antichrist, the false prophet, and more. If you want to be a part of it, go to my profile and click the Eventbrite link in my bio. See you there. zombies though
I'm not sure why they're trying to speed up the end times, but the sacrifice they're about to do is very cult-like behavior. This is picking up a lot of speed very quickly in these evangelical Christian groups right now. These are all new videos on the Red Heifer Prophecy that were posted within the past few days. South Park actually made an episode related to this, and you can find a clip of it on TikTok. The reason this matters for everybody else, because if these religious fanatics do this, they may very likely toss us into World War III. Hey, we building, y'all. We building. Pay attention. This shit get crazy. Look at it, guys. Another angle. That's the doomsday clock. New York City. Union Square. Act in time, they're telling you. Look at this. Five years. Now, pay attention to these numbers and stuff. Like, the whole the whole sentiment of this. Pay attention. This is going to build up, and it's going to show you a bigger picture. It's crazy. You got five years. And they already built that new third temple in Israel, by the way, in Jerusalem, is already built. You see that climate clock? That temple's already built, by the way. They got a thing called the red heifer. Go and look it up. I study it. Pure red heifers. And when they slaughter them, that's when it's all going to begin. Climate clock. Right there. Five years. The climate clock. It's not a climate clock, guys. They know what the Bible's doing. And everything that's going on in this world is going according to things that they took out of the Bible. You see, look, climate clock. World climate clock. Unbelievable. Look at this. Union Square Park. See this? Hey. Look at that. Act in time. What do y'all think is going to happen when that clock goes to zero? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Look, you see that? Act in time. They're trying to give you a warning right there. That's your warning. Scientists have reported that a horned comet three times bigger than Mount Everest exploded and is hurtling toward Earth. The celestial hailstone, which orbits around the sun every 71 years, won't reach its closest point to Earth until 2024, whereupon it will become visible to the naked eye. This comet will then be catapulted back into the solar system and won't make its cosmic comeback tour until the year 2095. Do you remember when five unblemished red heifers arrived in Israel on September 15th, 2022? Those red heifers came all the way from a privately owned ranch along the Brazos River in a town called Glen Rose, Texas. Glen Rose, Texas just so happens to be in the path of totality on April 8th, 2024. Welcome to part four of things you probably haven't heard about the 2024 total solar eclipse. The 2017 eclipse went through seven cities named Salem and the 2024 eclipse is going to go through seven cities named Nineveh. And both of these eclipses are seven years apart. It's time to talk about the number seven. But first, we have a quick Hebrew lesson. Elohim is a plural noun meaning gods or deities in Hebrew. The plurality is important because it validates everything Yeshua said that was recorded in the New Testament. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, Yeshua says, I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come the Almighty. In Genesis chapters 1 and 2, we see Elohim created the heavens, the earth, and everything in them in six days. In Genesis 2 verse 3, Elohim blessed the seventh day, making it holy. We're literally one chapter and a couple verses into the Bible and Elohim is blessing the seventh day, making it holy, showing us how significant the number seven is. We continue to see the number seven throughout the word of God. Here are just a few examples in no particular order. Jacob served Laban for seven years. Pharaoh's repetitive dream featured seven fat oxen representing seven years of plenty and seven lean oxen representing seven years of famine. There were seven branches of the golden lampstand. There were seven trumpets and seven priests who sounded them at the siege of Jericho. The people marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days. Noah entered the ark with seven family members God shut the door. Then seven days later, the floodwaters covered the earth. Once in the land, the children of Israel were commanded to observe the Shemitah, known as the year of release. 
It was a sabbatical year in which all of the land rested for the entire year. Debts were forgiven, land was returned to its owner, and captives were set free. The Feast of Unleavened Bread lasts seven days. The Festival of Booths, known as Sukkot, is also seven days long. The Sabbath is on the seventh day of the week. The tribulation will last seven years. There are seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls, all mentioned in the book of Revelation. The ordination ceremony performed by Moses in the book of Leviticus chapter eight required oil to be sprinkled seven times on the altar. To complete the ordination ceremony, the priests had to stay at the entrance of the tabernacle for seven days and seven nights. According to the Torah given to the children of Israel at Mount Sinai, anyone who touches a dead body, a human bone, or a grave is ceremonially unclean, unclean. For seven days. During the time of King Hezekiah, the festival of unleavened bread was celebrated for seven days. Then the assembly decided to continue celebrating and rejoicing for another seven days. The dedication of Solomon's temple was celebrated for seven days. And just after that dedication, the assembly celebrated the feast of Sukkot together for another seven days. Ezekiel's temple, which many believe will be the third temple, will be cleansed and atoned for for seven days. Now let's get back to the red heifers in Israel. One of them is going to be sacrificed soon, quite possibly this year. One of the motives of the October 7th attack is attributed to the red heifers that were taken from Texas to Israel. Just take a look at this article in CBS News. The spokesperson for Hamas, Abu Ubaida, began a speech marking the 100th day of the war in Gaza, accusing the Jews of bringing red cows to the Holy Land, citing it as one of the motives of the attack. After one of these unblemished red heifers all the way from Texas is sacrificed in Israel, a priest is going to take its blood and sprinkle it not one, not two, but seven times toward the front of the temple or tabernacle. Where will this temple be built and which priest is doing the sprinkling? My answers might surprise you. Come back for part five. Until next time, bye. What? The National Guard will be deployed for total solar eclipse on April 8th. Why? Why does the National Guard need to be deployed for a solar eclipse? What's so concerning? I mean, all right. You had me a little with the uh, keeping the kids away from school. I was like, why would you do that? It's only a solar eclipse, but whatever. Okay, and, and, and now the National Guard needs to be deployed. And you know, on top of that, what's the deal with stocking up on food and making sure your batteries are all charged? Like, what do they think is going to happen during this solar eclipse? I mean, I thought it was just the moon goes in front of the sun. It gets a little dark and everything is fine. I don't understand why we need the National Guard, why we need to shut down schools, why we need to stock on supplies, and why do we need our batteries fully charged for an eclipse? What the hell's going on? Three days of darkness, let me tell you everything that I know, and Lord knows I do not want to make this video. I don't like to speculate, and I'm not given to internet conspiracy theories, but I have something that I have to tell you. I do see something here, I've been seeing it here for a long time. It's time to come clean. I moved my family out of Alaska because of a gut feeling. Wasn't the only reason, it was just the first one that caused me to look for all the rest. Maybe it's silly, maybe none of this is true, but it bothered me so bad that I moved my family out of Alaska. This article was ran by Forbes over six years ago and can only help you speculate. This is the Edgar Casey map, a clairvoyant communing with demons to see the future. Potentially total garbage. Only I don't think it is. Because this makes some kind of sense to me that I cannot explain. Now until very recently, and I mean this month, I did not know that there was a correlation between total solar eclipses and devastating earthquakes. And now that I do, <sighs> the plot is getting real thick, fam. In September of 1811, a total solar eclipse took this path through the United States. 
And in December of 1811, the New Madrid fault line popped off in a series of devastating earthquakes that lasted all the way through into January. Now the scientists say there is increased earthquake activity in the face of new moons, a new moon being required for a total solar eclipse. There is a scientific correlation there that seems to have everything to do with causation. But it was three months after the eclipse. What's your point? If a barge goes under a bridge and hits one of the supports and damages it, there might be 2,000 vehicles roll over the bridge before it gives out, is what I'm saying. So that the new moon of a solar eclipse is like a barge passing under a bridge and hitting one of the supports. This is the path the total solar eclipse took in July 1963. Funny thing, it passed right through Talkeetna, Alaska, where my family and I lived, long before we were born. And then in March of 1964, a devastating earthquake tore Anchorage all to pieces. Solar eclipse is not an instant trigger, it's more like a fatal wound to the fault line. Doesn't mean there's going to be a terrible earthquake after every total solar eclipse, mm -hmm. but every total solar eclipse affects the fault lines they pass over because of that new moon, scientifically. Whether I explain these events spiritually or physically, they are true, both ways. It is the spiritual producing the physical. After the total solar eclipse of 1811, there was a series of devastating earthquakes followed by years of decline straight into the Great Depression. Followed by the Great Depression, did you hear? Do total solar eclipses just mean earthquakes? No, they affect more than just fault lines. They warn of much more than just earthquakes. Look, if I could make this stuff up out of my own mind, I'd be God, get it? But instead, look at us, us little bitty babies just learning about his creation, don't even know how it works. So, rut row, what the stink is that converging right over top of the New Madrid Fault? I mean, can you say X marks the spot? What is going on there? This is the path of the solar eclipse from August 21st of 2017. Well, nothing happened after that one, did it? Didn't warn of anything at all. Y'all forget about COVID and every single thing that has happened to our country since then? That wasn't enough to get your attention, get your minds right? Well, this is the path of that solar eclipse that's about to happen on April 8th. And the very spot where it crosses the path of the last one is the New Madrid fault line. Y'all don't see that right there? If you do not believe in God and only believe in science, that right there is alarming, bruh. And I mean, call the National Guard. See if they can stop it. <laughs> Time for a Bible punch in the mouth. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Y'all think that's a random coincidence? This is the scientific prediction should that fault line pop off. Should that New Madrid fault line pop off right there, this is the prognosticator's view of what the future topography of the United States of America is going to look like. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen at all, only that it would make great and terrible sense to me if it did. I am no authority on this subject as far as men are concerned. I got two years of videos you can scroll though and decide for yourself whether I have authority and where it might be from. And still, that's not to say that this is true or false, mm -hmm. only that it makes sense to me, but who am I? The scientists have no authority whatsoever to tell us how it's actually going to happen, and neither do I know exactly how it's going to play out in the details. We are all speculating on what exactly it's going to be. It is God who is in control of what it will be. But he gave us plenty of potential to consider in the face of world history. In March of 2011, a 9.1 undersea megathrust earthquake occurred in the Pacific Ocean, 72 miles off the coast of Japan. In July of 2010, there was a total solar eclipse that passed over the Pacific. Why would this affect Japan at all? Oh snap, this is the ring of fire and that total solar eclipse went exactly this way. And that megathrust earthquake hit Japan this way. Oh, there's a pattern, a recurring series of events here. A pattern I did not know when I got the gut feeling to move my family out of Alaska. Not that that counts for anything. Except with me, I trust my gut. Did you know if they knew all the variables, they could predict all of the earthquakes too? It's on a schedule. What's funny is when I made that first sign of Jonah video, I wasn't thinking about any of this at all. Not considering this as a potential for anything, I was thinking World War III is on our doorstep, you know, and it is. The economy goes down, maybe a new round of disease, which thing is pestilence. Oh, snap, if pestilence followed the 2017 eclipse, 
is there some way to know where we are on the timeline of what it mean what eclipses mean or you know what's following them specifically each one probably i haven't looked at that yet but i'm pretty sure you know you'd find it because wouldn't that make sense Three Days of Darkness, as we're all hearing about it, is based on a false private prophecy wherein in Three Days of Darkness, the Catholic Church's enemies will all be destroyed. And that might sound good on the surface, but they got that whole idea from the Bible to begin with, and men have been making false prophecies out of stuff they got in the Bible this whole time. Internet conspiracies also need not apply, because they're so chock full of disinformation, it's hard to sort it out, you know? Three Days of Darkness was one of the plagues that descended on Egypt during the Exodus. Precluding the Exodus. Does that mean we're about to get an Exodus? I stinking hope so, I really do. Does it mean we're gonna get a revival? Well man, that's what I would surely love. I ain't gonna talk too much, I'm just gonna show y'all. is a line keep watching about this the sun and the moon are not aligned on april hell i'm proud of you it took you a minute but you caught up that's good which timeline did you come from i'm curious they haven't been lined up, and they haven't been where they're supposed to be for a long time. I've been, I've been saying, saying that this too. for a long time now. Not since that 2017 eclipse has stuff been in the right spot. My guess, however, is that what we're seeing is uh, going to be real fucking interesting. So be ready for that. You're going to see some shit you didn't expect. Have you ever wondered about the cosmic dance between celestial bodies? Let's demystify the three-body problem in simple terms. It's the science of predicting how three objects in space, influenced only by their gravity, move and interact. Unlike two objects, which we can predict easily, adding a third makes everything chaotic and unpredictable. This problem has puzzled astronomers since ancient times, and even today, it challenges our best mathematicians and computers. But why does it matter? Understanding this chaos helps us unlock the secrets of the universe, from the orbits of planets to the dance of galaxies. So next time you look up at the night sky, remember the complex beauty of the three-body problem. Another planet, and the entire thing goes into chaos mode and doesn't work and can never predict what's going to happen next. But if you go out tonight with all the billions of stars in our galaxy and all the planets and, and moons and everything, check them out where they are at a certain time tonight, next year, same night, same time, even though we're billions of miles away, corkscrewing through space, nothing changes. Every single star will be in the exact same position. The chances of a moon and a sun 400 times bigger, 400 times farther, eclipsing each other perfectly is one in infinity, okay? And, okay, Man. and... They happen all the time, and after that, did you know that eclipses, the cycle of eclipses, repeat every 18 years? Every 18 years, they do the same thing again and again and again. That's impossible in a beehive gravitational bullshit model. This is the thing that they're saying. They're telling you that the sun will be in Aries and there will be eclipse in Aries. That's not true. Sun ain't going into no Aries. It's going back into Aquarius. New age, baby. That's what you don't know. <laughs> and, and free flat earth, that means the, the, the earth's gonna stop too. That's what people don't realize. The earth will stop. If you don't get this Fruits and Flowers offering done, I, hey man, I'm going to get mine done. <laughs> I done did mine on the Serpent Mound two days ago. Now, and, and, we, and we did the whole joint. We wrapped it around the planet. We wrapped it around the planet. We wrapped that joint around the planet. Shout out to the Atlantean people around the planet because we are all over the place. We ain't just in that line. It's a lie. Most of us, this is our nucleus of where our people are in that line. But some of the people from around the world, are, you, you showed your Atlantean spirit and you showed what you like, what you here to do. 
we're dead serious. This ain't no game. This ain't game. No, no game to none of us. You think that you're gonna you're gonna uh, uh, fight a dark energy with a dark energy? <clears throat> cool, man. You go ahead and do that, man. I know what I'm doing right now. We're waking up the planet, and it is working. See, our age is coming in. Put an Earth in the chat if the age is coming in. Put an Earth in the chat if the if the Earth stood still for like a week last year. Huh? Put an Earth in the chat if it did that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just... Maybe we've been doing this for almost two years now. And now maybe we starting to see really what it really is. We put that thing to a screeching halt. Stop the presses. We don't wait for no eclipses that they put on their TV. And they try to put into this algorithm. Try to throw off our... What we're doing, we know what we're doing.